Today's video is a little different. I noticed uh, last time I was out, I came back home and was putting up the boat and noticed down here oil coming out of the from underneath the cover. So I popped the engine cover and noticed a lot of oily residue here. So I did some looking, trying to figure out what it was. Noticed on my engine cowling, it looks like there was some oil there. This is a relatively new thing, so I kept searching and searching and looking, and then finally I found it looks to be a little bitty crack right here in this uh, oil supply hose. So today I'm going to try to get all this cleaned up and uh, replace these hoses. I'll probably just show an example of one, but uh, you know, check them all out, make sure no others are, are cracked, and get them replaced. Uh, in order to hose online, it's about five bucks a foot. It's not cheap, but um, beats having to replace a, a new power head. So I'll probably go ahead and pull these covers off too because it looks like you know there's quite a bit of oil down in there and get that all cleaned up. And I've got a speedometer uh, pressure hose to replace anyway. So, anyway, we'll dig into it here in just a minute. So to pull these covers off, just a 10 millimeter ratchet is needed. Quite a bit of oil in there that we'll have to wipe down, clean out. And hopefully this gives me easier access to the other side of where this oil line goes in. I'll have to figure that out. Not quite sure just yet. And on the other side, there's two 10 millimeter hitted screws that fit in here and hold this clamp down, and that's for the cable bundle that goes into the motor. So I lift that out of the cover so you can slide it off. All right, and on this side, pop the cable bundle out of this little clamp and then disconnect your trim switch cable. silencer off the front too. Looks like quite a bit of oil up here. Just make sure I don't have something else leaking up front as well. So. that come in through here and then you just kind of loosen up this flywheel cover up a little bit to allow these things to pop out and then there's a little connector here you gotta disconnect and there's the air silencer so it's got a little bit of oil in it too now at this point I'm just gonna kind of inspect everything for leaks See where this may be leaking from. Some of it, I think, with this split, it's just putting out an atomization of oil everywhere and just kind of coating things. Uh, it sure seems to be kind of localized to that area, but we'll give everything a good 
once over just to make sure because your oil pump sits up here and it's got some oil lines that go to cylinders as well so kind of make sure none of those are leaking pretty significant break in this oil line I kind of leaned on it it's opened up pretty good, cracked all the way down to this fitting here. Okay, the oil lines, they kind of come up and then go down on this side of this head. And the little coil seem to be power pack, seem to be kind of in the way, but I think it looks like there's three screws, four screws that I think I can take this whole rail off and rotate it back. And then hopefully that'll give me access to where the oil lines go into the, the block. So. Yeah, I was hoping I wouldn't have to take these off. I could just get the brackets off, but I'm gonna pull these so I can get access to these bracket screws that screw into the block. So these come off at 11 millimeter, and then the screws into the block for the bracket are 10 millimeter. All right, looks like four 10 millimeter screws hold this rail in. Get access to them. You at least got to take these two top power packs off to access the heads a little more directly. At least I did with the tools I have to work with. I think if you have a, some type of a better U joint than I had, they'll probably come off easier. Zip ties took a little bit, but kind of secure this up. So it appears three lines go here and three lines go here. So the challenge is I gotta find out which the example I'm doing, which line it is. And it does not appear to be very easy to get to these. Mm. Push on a nipple and have a zip tie that keeps it connected to the nipple. But first, let's start wiggling a line, see if we can find out which one it is. Maybe we'll be lucky to be on this side. Done that first. Let me give you all a view. And the 
trace this line and it goes up over the top of the engine, up and around. And I lucked out. I didn't have to. Well, it pulls power packs, but it actually is this line that comes around and connects right here to the very top one for the number one cylinder. So, uh, good deal there. So, so I'll clip the zip tie and then um, take my new line, run it back through the um, the sheathing. Maybe use a little hose splicer and pull it back through with the old one. So I get it to the right length and then, then we'll pop that little manifold apart and get it secured. And I went ahead and pulled the flywheel cover off just so I could see and give me some room. So 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt here. There's a, a little plastic cover that fits right on it. Alright, well it just broke off. So. We got it zip tied up on the top, so now we're gonna work on this here. Good thing I bought some extra hose. Maybe this one's this one's been leaking as well. All right, we'll have to figure out where that little fella goes. Things I learned: uh, number one, I didn't need to take this apart. Uh, I wasn't sure how these hoses came off, but the way it appears to work is you push down on these little black circular things as you push down, and you can pull the hose up. So it's kind of a um, check valve type capture, I guess, but uh, you know, I'm gonna cut this old hose off and get the ferrule out and then push it into the uh, back into the manifold. And unfortunately, I broke another uh, line, changed this one out, so we got a new line to fish out. But I've got the process down, so now I think it's just a matter of working through it. Look how these come apart. So push down on this little black piece and then pull up on the hose end. This may be a little tough because this one doesn't have much material to grab onto. Hopefully we didn't booger up the um, feral too bad. Okay, I'm cutting the old line off this little brass feral.
and we'll reuse that. But I did see that their replacements are available if you need them. Good. And then I think this just pops back in. And it's back in. Good tight grab. Huh? Okay, the other hose that broke while I was changing out, it just disintegrated. It is, came apart in about 10 different pieces, just very brittle, so that leads me to believe I really need to replace all of these, but uh, I'll do as much as I can with the amount of hose I've got, and uh, I may have to order some more, but um, luckily this other one that uh, that broke goes to the top of the engine as well. It's fairly easy to get to, so we'll give it a shot. And it's looking like I just discovered a small knicker crack in uh, the main line to the manifold, so hopefully I've got enough to replace it. But uh, when I found out these are shark bite type connectors, so you push the little ferrule down and the hose pops out, and then there's a little ferrule that fits inside the hose push it back in flush with a uh, flat cut hose you know make sure the this surface is very very flat and then uh, just push it back in and they self lock so a couple more to replace and should be back in business well, that's the basic mechanism on on how to replace it and I'll put all this back together but I'll go fish this one out that broke off and check all the others for brittleness and additional cracks because Obviously, you need a good oil supply to each cylinder. Anyway, I hope this helps you out. You know, I tried to find something on YouTube about this and didn't have any luck. Saw others had similar problems, but it was just kind of describing the problem, not really the solution. So, hopefully, this will be a benefit to you. And uh, good luck.